by the chief priests and the Pharisees and the people that meant the most to him. And so when Martha sins for him, he's, she says, Master, the one you love is sick. That's all. She doesn't tell him to come. She doesn't tell him how bad it is. And immediately you know that Jesus, who was fond in a very special way because Jesus loved Martha and loved Mary, and he loved Lazarus, and he used to stay at their house in Bethany, a stone uh, thrown from the temple of Jerusalem when he went there to pray. And so it is that the first word in John's description of what is to take place is Jesus loved her. And that's the keynote of understanding this whole gospel. It is love. Jesus loves her, Jesus loves Lazarus, and he loves Mary, and he loves his disciples, and he loves people, and that's what he does. He's a lover. He has come to bring the love of God and to help them understand that he has come to show forth that love in the ordinariness of their lives. And so it is, he says to his disciples, that he will linger for a while. And he has a very good reason for that. The reason is he already knows that the illness is very severe. And he knows that already Lazarus has passed away. And so he waits and finally he decides to go in the middle of the wake. The ceremony 
is really a burial, and then he appears. And of course, Martha rushes out to meet him, and she's a, a little annoyed because she felt that if he had come, he would have been healed, like he healed so many others. He would have healed her brother, and her brother would be alive. And she says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. She's kind of hoping that he will do something very special. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus says uh, these words, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he says to her, do you believe this? And she says, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who's coming into the world. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. What does that mean? What, oh, what does he mean? He means exactly what he says. He means that he himself can give eternal life to all who come to him, but they must believe. You gotta have faith. You gotta believe in miracles. You gotta believe that God can uh, heal you. And if they open their hearts and they believe in him, they have already had eternal life because he's the son of God. And God represents life, not death, not destruction, not evil. There's nothing about death in God. God lives and God's son comes down and to tell us that he lives and he continues to live after he dies. And we will live, but we gotta have faith. We gotta be honest about what we believe in. So death now becomes a, a passageway. It doesn't become a terrible event that has uh, to be some kind of wonderful thing that, that, that happens. What Jesus is revealing to Martha, who loves him, is that all are destined for eternal life. That death is only a transition. It's a, a movement. It's a moving from one place to another. It's a, a, a passage, a rite of passage. But death is not the end. And uh, we have to believe in that journey. We have to believe that God is with us all the way. Because Jesus says, I'm the way, I am the truth, I am the light. And then they take him to the tomb, and he does something very strange. He, he mourns. And you say, why? If Lazarus is with God and he's safe, there's no need for mourning. But he knows different. He knows that when he passes from us and that we no longer reach him in the ordinariness of daily life and goes on a distant journey into a darkness we do not understand, we mourn. We cry. Because we have lost something. But our mourning is in faith. And we believe that he's, he's gone home to a God who loves him more than perhaps we do. But what Jesus mourns for is something different, church. He mourns for the fact that this world is rough and cruel. And it isn't God who has made it that way, but we ourselves. People, people lives are full of loneliness and despair, full of di difficulty. There are so many fears. And even in this day, when we seem to have material things at our back and call, our hearts hunger and sometimes fear and sometimes get lost in the malaise that comes with just being a human being. 
We were created to love. And that's what Jesus says, and that's what the gospel is saying to us today. Someone who loves you is sick, and Jesus goes to him to heal him or her. It is the love story of God. God loves us. God cares for us. God is concerned about us. And he allows his son to take on the pain, you know, our pain. Because only through the incarnation could the pain of our daily experience, you know, and existence be revealed to God himself. Because God had to go through it. And to what extent? We will know next week when we celebrate the Last Supper, the Supper of Love, where he says he will always be with us, even though he will die, he will be with us, because we are destined for life, not death. And then he will be nailed to a cross, a old rooted cross, and he will die. And yet, they will remember he did not die in the sense of disappearing in the nothingness of existence. He lives and he is risen. And out of that, church, we begin to understand what we were created for. We were created for life. We were created for love. But in this world, there's one thing for us to reach out to this truth. This truth that is true whether we believe in it or not. To reach out to this truth, we must put our faith in something beside, besides ourselves. For our little world, we must put our faith in love with each other. Because God is love. For those who love and for those who have faith, we have no trouble understanding the words of Jesus. I am the light of the world. I'm telling you what you really are. I am the truth, and the truth will set you free. I am the light, and you must know that you might pass through much darkness, not necessarily death, but the darkness on the edges of despair, of disappointment, of feeling all alone, all rejected, everything that it means to be a human being as well as rejoicing and praising God for the great things in life. When those times come, you must know that God is with you, and you must turn to God in faith. Believe in him. Believe in him. This faith isn't just believing that God exists. This faith is giving yourself into God's hands like a lover to someone he or she loves, because becoming a part of him that we might become truly like him, calling God our Father, sharing the spirit that God himself has given to us. You know, this is something that John wants us to understand about Lazarus, about Jesus. In Lazarus, it's the sign and the symbol of the truth of every human being, that we are not created for a time, a, uh, for a, a time to die and disappear into nothingness, where we are created to love God and to love each other, and most of all, to love this world, because we are the world. And then why do you have such pain at, at, at that time? It seems like such a simple thing. And I'll just end with this. The source of my fear today in 2023 is this. God is crying, and we are not there to wipe away God's tears. And why is Jesus crying? He's crying for all the people that were at the tomb, those who were wondering who he was and what he was. He was weeping though, most of all because he saw the world as a need of God and God crying to become a part of it and being rejected and the world turning into something that God would have destroyed 
if God did not love the people in it. And the feeling that we should bring into Holy Week is to love God with all our might, with all of our soul, with all of our spirit, with all of our mind, and to be one with God, and to be one with the world. God bless you.